What's up YouTube, Cosmo here with five tips on making an absolute epic banger. Today we'll be looking at my new song, The Game of Life. Let's hear a little bit of that. Tip number one is sample yourself like a Motown sample and then pitch it up and speed it up. Here you can hear me singing. Notice I've imported my vocals and piano together as a file and pitch shifted that up seven to give it that chipmunky effect. I also recorded this at 70 BPM and now I'm at 90 BPM. This is trying to mimic, you know, classic hip hop sampling. Another thing I did is I, I also exported just the acapella, which you can hear over here. This was cool to have the sample melded with the piano, but I knew I would want the acapella as well, which would give me more options. For instance, this part of the track, I didn't want the piano. I wanted the future bass serum chords to come in. And it was good to have that flexibility. Make sure to go to complex pro mode if you're gonna pitch a sample like this up so much. Tip number two is experiment with the transients before your snare. So most people know that if you've got a main snare, you can put another snare right before it. You see the transients of this Oliver snare are hitting a little bit. Let's just hear their snare. So it's actually a clap, but you can just see in the transients that they've, they've kind of added a special little something right before this part of the sample. I'm intentionally flaming that. And that's kind of a common trick everyone knows. Oliver is obviously so good at making drums. Notice this other snare sample. That's kind of the one I wanted to focus on. So this is one, and you can see that the transients are different here. There's two little transients. What if I cut out the rest of it? So that's what I think can be really cool is whether you have to make this yourself or you just have a sample that has it, experiment with, you know, there could be even three of these little transients in here before the snare. That sounded kind of cool too. I think I saw on one of the two San Hola tutorials that he made, he was doing the same thing. Having that can be really important. So let's hear, for instance, with the drum group, but without this snare. And now let's hear it with that snare. It's really subtle, but this is adding a lot of groove to your track. Tip number three is to key map a key device to your song. What I mean here is for this drop, let's hear it. I'm looking for this dramatic gating effect that I'm achieving with the auto pan right here. And basically I couldn't be lazy and just put this auto pan on my group. I had to kind of tweak it per track. So for instance, this one has it. And here, this one has it too. So basically I need a lot of these things. So what you do is you hit command K for your key maps and just assign a key. I'm gonna hit capital A for auto pan. And so every time I want a new sound to have this, I'm just going to hit sh uh, Shift A, Capital A, and now I can Option drag this to another track that needs it. And that's going to be really convenient seeing I need a lot of those auto pan gators. Tip number four, memorize your music intervals very well. Notice here I, I've memorized all my intervals. The reason for this is that to get a huge sound, I need to layer a lot of brass and synth shots. Here's some of them. And sometimes you don't wanna go MIDI. Sometimes you wanna go audio. So I know that if this thing is up four, I know to get from my, my root down to my fifth, it's gonna be five half steps down. Then I'm gonna go up one to get to the sixth. So you have to have a, an understanding of music theory, but Many times I've seen people know chords music theory, but they forget their intervals. And the intervals are what's gonna let you quickly manufacture parts if you can get really quick with the transpose knob. Basically the key for me on this song is by layering lots of stuff, I'm able to get a huge sound. Notice when I solo all these tracks.
and I wouldn't be able to do it as fast if I just didn't know the intervals. So tip number five is to copy your MIDI data from your chords to generate an arpeggio and a bass line. This is a really easy workflow. So you first write your chords, then you bring that down to the bass and you delete all the notes except for the root. Here I randomly decided to leave this first note as a chord, then try to make your bass a fatter sound than your chords. And finally here, I've also done it to create an arpeggio. So this is the exact same notes as my chords, just with an arpeggio on there. Let's hear all the synths together. So the workflow is so fast, it just lets you build up uh, a bass, an arp, and a chords really quickly. All right, that's all we got for today. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure to hit subscribe on YouTube, and if you want more frequent tutorials, check out my Instagram. I'll put a link to the song in the description. Peace out, y'all.